Governor, this morning, very sad news. Over the weekend, Harry Gregg passed away, a survivor of Munich, great goalkeeper in his own right. He was a, world, it was a record fee for a goalkeeper when he signed for Manchester United. Yeah. And you knew him well. Well, I, I knew him, yes. But he, it, 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 his death is hard, uh, the, hard to come to terms with in the sense that he was the definitive larger-than-life character. Um, the last time I spent a, a, a lot of time with him was uh, when I was researching uh, the life story of Maps and Matt Busby. And I went over to this house that uh, Harry, ha Harry and his wife Carolyn, um, who uh, you know, I think everyone's thoughts will be mm. with at the moment, um, had this lovely house up on a hill overlooking Coleraine. His, you know, in other words, he was back to his hometown. Roots. This yeah. is where, it, where he came from, yeah. And... Um, the views were absolutely stunning. Harry had this armchair right next to a picture window so that he was sort of surveying um, the land from whence he came. And he, this was about three years ago, and he was in magnificent shape. I mean, really straight back, magnificent sort of goalkeeper's physique. Um, still there, and he, was, he would have been 84 at that time, 83, 84 at that time. Um, in the interim, you know, he, you know, age caught up with him, and um, now he's gone. But I'll, I'll never forget that day, and I'll never forget all the stories that he told. Um, I, obviously, a lot of it was about Munich. Um, it wasn't exactly a light uh, a subject, um, but Harry uh, could uh, found even managed to find self-deprecating humour. Even in that, he, he told me, I said, you know, what were you, how did you feel when the plane took off, attempted to take off for the third time? And he said, well, I was really worried because, you know, I was, uh, I was brought up a, a, a Christian, you know, and, and, and still sort of had visions, schoolboy visions of the fires of hell and so on. And he'd been reading a book, he'd taken a book to the match in Belgrade um, to fill in the sort of idle hours. And he said, uh, Harry said, he said, the book was about as raunchy as the Beano, but it was a little bit. And I was wondering if uh, I'd get through the pearly gates if anything went wrong. Um, and although it, it sort of pricked the bubble of what was a very, very difficult conversation for, for both of us, um, Harry was, um, you know, we bandy the word hero a lot around in, in, in reporting of sport and football in particular. Harry was a real life hero. Harry saved lives at Munich. He, um, after the, the crash took place, he, uh, uh, there was complete confusion. The pilot, one of the pilots, Captain Thane, was running around, Harry remembered, with a little tiny uh, fire extinguisher. You know, the kind of thing that would put out a little fire in a car, but, you know, it seemed a bit inadequate for what had happened in the wreckage of a plane. And the pilot was shouting, and um, Harry was, said, you know, the, pardon my language, but he was shouting, get out, you bastards, you know, get out, you stupid bastards, run, because he thought the plane was going to blow up. Uh, Harry just ignored that. And instead of running away, he heard the, a little cry of a baby. It was a toddler, the daughter of a, the wife of a, um, Yugoslav diplomat, uh, Vera Lukic. Uh, she had a daughter of between 18 months and two years old, and the child was whimpering. So Harry went straight back into the plane, even though it was smoldering and could go up at any time. And he got the child, took the child out, gave, it, gave the child to, I can't remember, some other survivor who was running around and said, you know, get this child out of danger, and went back in and got the mother, Mrs. Lukic. Um, she was in a, it, she, I think she'd broken a leg, and so it was not easy to get her out, And uh, but he did. And uh, he saved another life there because Mrs. Lukic was pregnant with her, her son who was born, and later born. And, and so um, w whether he actually saved the lives of, of teammates like Dennis Violet and Bobby Charlton, you can't be quite sure because they were actually thrown cl clear of the plane but he took no chances with them either and dragged them through the snow. He also um, attended to Sir Matt Busby, who, although he had terrible injuries that caused him to remain in hospital in Munich for 
several months. Um, it seemed to Harry that Matt was not as badly injured as some of the others, um, or in as much danger. So he just sort of propped Matt up and um, and attended to the, the more serious people and, and saved lives. He was a, he was a true hero. But he spoke of himself always. A little bit like that, the story about the book, you know, that he was worried about uh, <laughs> not finding favour in heaven. Um, but uh, it, it, every, just about every story he told had a self-deprecating. He, he used to refer to himself as a big daft Irishman, you know. And he, he, he just, although he didn't suffer fools gladly, um, he really had this ability to laugh at himself, um, which was utterly delightful. And I think he's a great loss to the Manchester United community and to humanity, I really do. Um, but uh, I just feel very, very, very lucky to have spent time with him. And a good friend of the FWA as well. The thing about Harry was that whenever he... He was naturally, because of a survivor and a hero of the Munich disaster, he was constantly asked to speak at events and commemorations and so on. And he never, never ever spoke without saying, yes, eight players died, so did eight journalists. And he named them, and only one journalist survived, as, 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 as you probably know, um, Frank Taylor. The rest all died, and he never forgot them. And he never, when people talked about the, the Busby Babes dying, which obviously was, was, was a huge tragedy for the sporting world, as well as the families and everyone else, he never forgot to couple their names, the names of the Roger Burns and the so on, with the names of the Henry Roses and the journalists who died. And I, I just felt, always felt that the respect he showed um, for the journalists who perished was another mark of the man.